Hey everybody, if you're anything like me, your workstation might look something like this. I'm going to show you how to make a router bit and tool holder to organize your workstation. Alright, we're going to get started by tracing out the shapes of the tools that we want to cut out. I'm also going to use this rule as a reference and I'll show you why that's important later. Alright, now that we have our images, let's go ahead and open up Carbide Create. going to start by setting up our stock size. <clears throat> so I have a scrap piece of walnut that I'm going to use, which is seven and a quarter inches wide and six and a half inches deep. It's already been milled down to uh, about three quarters of an inch. Retract height, we'll change that to five. We're going to make sure that we're on the hardwood setting. I have uh, the Shapoko XXL selected. And now we're going to go ahead and bring that image in. All right, now you can see when we import that image, it's really big. So we're going to adjust the scale to bring it down to the proper size. Also, real quick, going to change this spacing of the grid to a quarter of an inch. So I'm not sure exactly what I have to adjust the scale to. Let's try uh, 0.5 and see what it does. All right, and that's still really big. So let's try 0.1. All right, we're getting closer. So at this point, let's go ahead and we're going to make a rectangle that's five by three quarters of an inch. And the reason that's important is because we're going to match that to this rectangle that we drew on the piece of paper because we know that that actually measured five by three quarters of an inch. So I'm still a little big. Let's go back in, edit the document background, and we'll keep playing with the scale. Let's go to like 0 0.09. We can move this, and we can see that we're getting a lot closer. Let's try 0 0.091. All right, we're getting even closer. I think this is going to do it, 0 0.092. Yeah, that's pretty much right on. We don't have to be absolutely perfect because we're going to, when we do cut these out, we're going to put a little border around them. But it's best to get it as close as you can. Right, and you're just going to have to uh, play around with that. All right, now I'm going to start by tracing these tools out. Turn, snap the grid off. And again, this doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but we're just going to get try to get it as close as possible. So I'll start by laying out some circles over these round parts. Now 
Now we're just going to use lines to connect everything. We're just going to roughly follow this shape. Every time we click, we add a node. If we're not happy with all those, we can go back and edit them later. All right, now that I have these two shapes, I'm just gonna combine them. So I've got this one shape selected, I'm going to hit uh, Command on the Mac or Control on a PC and click here. Now we're just going to use these Boolean tools and uh, use the union. And that just joins them together. So now that's one piece. Now let's trace out our other wrench. Now again, we're going to combine those. So I've got this selected. Select that. So now again, we're going to combine those. Going to select the center. Select the end. All right, so now this here is showing up pink, which means that it isn't closed. So we're just going to select it. Go to down here in edit mode. And this is join. When we click that, it makes that all one piece. So now when I click it, it shows up uh, orange. Now we'll be able to join it to the ends. And we're going to use the union again. All right, now let's go ahead and we'll actually trace this out and remove this area from the, the toolpath that we've made.
All right, so now we've got that shape. We're gonna select the outline of the whole tool. Again, we'll click either Command or Control. And when you're selecting something else, just see that it shows up as a little dotted line. So now we're gonna use the subtraction. Now we've got another tool path that we can move around. So now that we've got um, this image actually at its proper scale and we've got our tool, our two tools traced out, let's just go ahead and turn the background off because it's kind of distracting. So we'll go to edit document background and you got this little button here, show. Just unclick that and it turns it off. All right, now we can move these off to the side. All right, and let's just uh, draw the rectangles that we want to uh, keep everything in. So I want like a quarter inch border on the edge and I'm going to keep all of the, the tools and all the pockets and everything that I cut out within that border. So um, we're going to make this box um, 6.75 because our um, width of our, our actual material is uh, 7.25. So we'll subtract a half inch, that's a quarter inch for each side. We're gonna do the same on the top and bottom. We're at uh, six and a half. We'll subtract a quarter inch for the top and a quarter inch for the bottom, and that'll be six. All right, I'm gonna turn snap to grid on, and I'm just gonna snap it right to that corner there. So that's quarter inch border all the way around. So this bottom area that I want to keep the two wrenches stuck inside, we're going to do uh, 6.75 again for the length and the height we're going to do 2.5. Snap that to there. Let's actually do uh, 2.25. That way we'll have a quarter inch gap between the pocket that we mill out here. We'll just move that down. Now I'm going to make another rectangle, and again that'll be 6.75, and the height on that will be 2.25, and I'm going to snap that to here, so that's going to give us a half inch gap, or a quarter inch gap right here. Now, when I move one of these, I can see that it's not perfectly square. And it doesn't really matter if it is, but I think it'll look a little better if it is. So I'm just going to rotate that. It doesn't need to be rotated much. So let's try rotating it just five degrees and see what happens. And that moved it a lot. So now we're going to have to move it back. So we'll move it back five and let's see what would have happened if we just moved it one degree. And that's pretty good. It's good enough for me. Now we'll take this wrench here. 
I'd kind of like this line to be parallel to this line. So let's also try just moving that one degree, rotating it one degree, I should say. And that's better, but it could be even better. Let's try another one degree. Okay, and that looks just about perfect. All right, so now I have my two wrenches laid out. For this pocket here, I would like to uh, radius the edges. So we'll just select it. And then you can see where you can edit the size. There's also an option that says square. If we come down and go to fillet, and now we can change this radius. Let's go to 0 0.25. It's gonna be a quarter inch radius. And it's just gonna radius those edges or those corners for us. All right, now something important to do because uh, a lot of times I have problems with this crashing is to save. I probably should have saved already, but let's just go ahead and save right now. All right, now we just need to lay out the grid for our actual uh, router bits. So for this grid, I'm going to come in. All right, now we're going to go ahead and lay out a grid for where all of our holes are going to be for our router bits. Um, I just use quarter inch router bits, so I'm going to be making quarter inch holes. Um, if you have eighth inch, you can just scale yours accordingly. So we'll select the rectangle tool. <clears throat> we're going to change this to 6.75, and we'll leave the height at 1 and see how that looks. All right, now I'm just going to start breaking this down into um, smaller, smaller portions. And really what I'm doing is just making it so I have more selectable points. So when I make my circles, I have somewhere to place them. See how these different points here highlight? That'll let me put a circle around there. So we're going to start by cutting this box in half, which is 6.75. We're going to draw another rectangle. Which is going to be approximately 3.375 and the height on that we can leave at 1 now we're going to split that in half one more time and we'll make another rectangle that is one inch tall and the width is going to be uh, 1.6875, which it's not going to let us put that whole number in, but that's okay. All right, and now let's cut that in half again. And 
Now we'll make one more rectangle. It's going to be an inch tall. And the width is going to be 0 0.84375, which again, it's going to round. Now I'm just going to go ahead and copy those. And on the Mac, we're going to use uh, Command C. On the PC, we'll use Control C. Every time you hit that, it's just going to copy that same shape that you had selected. And I'm just moving them down so they're all connected together. Now we have a grid laid out with points that I'll be able to select and draw my circles around. And it'll just keep everything neat looking. Now we can, now we can start doing our circles. We're just gonna come up to the circle tool, select this center, all right, now something important to keep in mind here is that we're working in uh, radius, not diameter. So if we put in uh, 0.25, like the diameter of the bit, it's actually gonna cut a half inch hole. So we're gonna have to make it half the size, which half of 0.25 is uh, 0.125, but we need to make it just a hair bigger than that so we've got room for our bit to fit in and cut and then also our uh, bits that we're actually going to put in there just to, to fit easily. So we're going to make it uh, 0.126. Now again I'm just going to do uh, Command C or Control C and move the center of every single one of these circles that I copy to these Now just to kind of clean this up, let's go ahead and we'll select this outside border and delete it. We'll select these borders here and delete them. And then we'll select all of these boxes and also delete them. And we can delete our reference too. All right, so that looks pretty good. I like the layout of everything. Now let's go ahead and make our tool paths. So let's select all of these circles. We're gonna to go to tool path, contour, make sure we've got the right bit selected. And I'm just using one of the factory uh, set bits, which is a number 201, and that's a, a quarter inch end mill. For the depth on these, I want them to be a half inch. And we can change that to pocket. For this pocket here, again, we've got our 201 bit selected. I'm actually going to change our step over here, which is going to make these lines closer together and just give us a smoother finish in the bottom. So let's change that from 0.113 to 0 0.08. We'll, again, we'll leave our uh, feed rate alone. And I want this to be 0.4. I'm just going to use this to hold like Allen wrenches and just random stuff that I have. Let's 
go back and check this. Sometimes when I change my step over, it doesn't change, and it actually didn't. So again, we'll change that to 0 0.08. And now we can see that it changed. Now we just need to do the wrenches. <clears throat> this one here it's a little bit thicker we're going to do pocket and again we'll change our step over and again you can see that didn't change so we'll go in and do it again I'm not sure why that happens And we're going to make this one 0.3. And we'll do that one more time. On this one, we're going to do 0.2 because it's not as thick as the other wrench. We'll change our step over again. save that again and let's check out what our simulation is going to look like there's one thing that we forgot to do we forgot that we wanted to put a little border around these tools here. That's all right. Just hide the simulation, go back to our design. Select these two. And then we're going to select this tool here, which is an offset path. Change it to the outside. And let's go uh, point zero eight. All right, that's a little more than I want. Let's do that again. Let's just go point zero five. All right, that looks pretty good. So now we're actually going to delete these inside toolpaths and we're gonna have to go ahead and change our wrenches to make sure that they're um, the correct toolpath Go ahead and delete these. Let's go ahead and delete the wrench tool paths. And we'll just do those over again. So again, we're going to do contour, pocket, first wrench, point two. We'll just go in and change that step over.
like this one, 0.3. Edit our step over. Alright, that looks good. So we're only using uh, one tool, so we can just go ahead and save our G-code. We'll only need to save one file. We won't need to make a, a separate one for individual tools. Alright, now let's open Carbide Motion and we'll get this thing cut out. Alright, so we're all done cutting it, and the holes for my router bits are great. But one thing that didn't come out so great was the holes that I cut out for these wrenches. So we're going to go back and fix that. Alright, let's go back to Carbide Create, go back to our design. And let's just make these here a little bit bigger. I'm not sure. We're going to go 0.1. We'll make sure we're on the outside. This is where these little stop collars come in handy. 
because now I don't have to uh, reset my Z height. 